We've made it to Versailles and I'm living my best life right now because a lifetime's ambition has just come true. We've got one of the little golf carts. You're living your best life and I'm living my best life. <laughs> it seems very slow. There, I, I think that's probably quite a good thing. Why all the pedestrians here? You're the one doing the... Oh, am I supposed to be map reading? Oh, yeah. well, this does not bode well. This is like the slowest version of Mario Kart yes. <laughs> I've ever seen. Mario Kart in slow motion. We're just having a little tour around the gardens, but then, super excitingly, we're going to go and visit the apartments of Madame de Barry, Louis XV's last mistress. They've just been renovated, open to the public not long ago, so I can't wait to take you with us and show you the mistress's apartments. The woman who was to become La Comtesse du Barry was born as an illegitimate child in 1743. Her mother was a seamstress and it was believed that her father was probably a priest. Jean became a prostitute in Paris who quickly became known for her beauty and she became a courtesan to many noblemen. One of them, Jean-Baptiste du Barry, became her lover and he arranged for her to be introduced to the king who'd been in a depression following the death of his mistress and best friend, Madame de Pompadour. Louis XV had been an extremely handsome man in his youth, but he was nearing 60, a very great age in those days. She was in her early 20s and he was immediately entranced. He even told one of his friends that he'd never known such pleasure in his entire life. His friend calmly replied, Sire, that's because you haven't frequented a bordello. But he just couldn't stay away from her. And after a period of mourning following his wife's death, he decided to make her his official mistress. And it seems unbelievably strange to us today. But then, in order to be an official mistress of the king, a woman had to be married. So a husband had to be found. In 1768, Jean-Baptiste du Barry suggested his brother, the Comte Guillaume du Barry, who, after the marriage conveniently retreated back to his lands in the south of France, considerably richer from a gift from the king. Now Jeanne was a countess, the Comtesse du Barry, and the king scandalised the court by moving her into Versailles, the first total commoner and prostitute to have been elevated to the status of royal mistress. He moved her into an apartment that used to be his own private apartment, hidden away from the grand public rooms of the palace and directly above his own bedroom. That's the apartment that we're going to visit now, and as you can see, it's hidden away up a small staircase. Behind this locked door lies an unexpected jewel box of an apartment. When Jeanne moved into this apartment, it only had three rooms, but she quickly persuaded the king to increase its size enormously. Her most shocking request was for it to be decorated in white woodwork with all of the mouldings in real gold. Up until this point, this had only ever been allowed to the princes of the blood and no royal mistress had ever had such an honour. What we just see as beautiful decoration today was seen as completely shocking back then. But she didn't succeed in getting every room done. Her buffet room, where she could entertain many people, kept its beautiful pink colour. And Louis XV's old winter dining room, which became her dining room, kept its green colour. Though it was fairly jazzed up, it originally had 31 gilt wood chairs. So she wasn't just having romantic tete-a-tetes in here. And as we go down this little corridor, you will see that her loo remained blue and white, though she had asked for it to be gold. One thing I love in this room is that if you look out of the window, you'll see that there's a little cutaway in the building. We can see the next room. We'll go and look at that room from the other side. This was her chambermaid's room. And looking back at the bathroom, again, you can see that cutaway. And there's a fascinating reason for that. It's all because Louis XV's sundial was on the wall opposite and the architect Gabriel had very carefully calculated that this area needed to be kept clear of building so that the sun would still hit the sundial opposite. Another room which remained blue was the stunning bathroom and I think this room has my absolutely favourite coving of the entire apartment. It is exquisite. The floor is not parquet because of course it needed to be waterproof and there was a beautiful porcelain stove in here that was fed from the other side of the wall to keep the bathroom warm. You can see looking at the floor that there were originally two baths in here and that's because it had been Louis XV's bathroom and strangely the king always had two baths. No one is quite sure why so when it became Madame du Barry's apartment only one bath was left. 
There are several theories. Possibly the king liked company whilst he bathed, so he'd have a friend in the other bathtub and they could chat. Or maybe one was for bathing and the other was for rinsing. Or perhaps one was hot water and one was cold water, a little bit like a Roman spa. But no one is quite sure why. Coming back into the glorious salon, you might notice the unusual flooring. But painting the wooden floors was done in all of the small apartments in Versailles in the 18th century as it brightened up dark rooms and it was always this yellow colour. The 18th century, in fact, was far more colourful than we imagine. Even the wooden marquetry commodes were originally multicoloured, but the colours have faded today. It's only in the porcelain of the day that we see the real colours that were fashionable at the time, as uniquely, colours in porcelain don't fade. In these plates made by Sèvres for Madame du Barry, in fact here you can see her monogram, the D and the B, we see the true colours of the 18th century. There are even darling little egg holders and this small vase, it looks like a mini wine cooler, but in fact it was for chilling your wine glass before use. Although the apartment is quite empty now, you have to imagine that back in those days it was filled with the most luxurious cutting edge furniture of the time. These medallion back chairs, however, did belong to Madame du Barry and they would have been considered extremely modern at the time. As you can see that although they have the rounded back of Louis XV chairs, the legs are straight and fluted, which became fashionable under Louis XVI, so they would have been considered ultra modern. Even once she was installed in such a luxurious apartment, she was not accepted by all. Marie Antoinette called her the creature and refused to acknowledge her presence. This became a diplomatic incident, and Louis XV asked Marie Antoinette's mother, the Empress of Austria, to intervene. Once she'd received a scolding from her mother, Marie Antoinette managed to say, when she next saw the Comtesse du Barry, Versailles is very crowded today. But that was enough. She'd acknowledged her presence, and from that point on, Jeanne could be accepted by the court. And actually, she eventually won many people over, because apparently she had a very kind, happy, generous nature. If you're wondering about the bedroom of a royal mistress, this was it, but this is not her original bed. That would have been placed in the middle of the room, it would have been a four poster covered in lavish drapes, and apparently it was carved with little lovebirds amidst crowns of flowers. Sadly, she only lived in this sumptuous apartment for four years. One day as she was staying in the Petit Trianon, the little retreat that she had with Louis XV in the Garden of Versailles, he fell ill, and it turned out to be smallpox. Louis was brought back to Versailles and she stayed by his side caring for him until six days before his death when he sent her away. He knew that she would be chased out after his death and he wanted her to leave with all of her furniture and her jewels and to give him time to repent and take his final confession. She was exiled for a while by Louis XVI but was eventually pardoned and was able to move to her chateau at Louveciennes. And in fact, this beautiful Pietra Dura table belonged to her then lover, the Comte de Brissac. But a terrible end awaited many of the aristocrats of those days. And during the revolution, his severed head was thrown through her open window and she herself was eventually guillotined at the age of 50. I don't know about you, but I absolutely loved visiting those apartments. They were not at all what I was expecting because they were such low ceilings. Did you notice that throughout? And it actually, instead of making them feel oppressive, made them feel really warm and cozy compared with the rest of the huge formal rooms at Versailles. And just seeing the stunning colours, the delicacy of the woodwork, the furniture and the fabrics in the rooms that had some, it's just taken my breath away. And they have said that now that they've restored the actual rooms themselves, they are going to be getting more furniture and filling them. The restoration of the apartment as they were at the time of Madame du Barry are not finished yet. And it'll be interesting to keep returning over the years to see the changes. But now we have decided that a spot of shopping in the town of Versailles itself is just what's needed. Oh, this is delightful. They have calisson decks, they're actually from the south of France. And the little calissons are the little almond-shaped cakes, and they are made of almond with a little bit of icing on top. Quite delicious. I'm trying to be good right now because we do have a lot of chocolate waiting back at La Lande. I think I'm getting just as much pleasure from window shopping at the moment. Oh, they've got marron glacé. Now, if my mother were here, I would definitely be buying those. They're sugared sweet chestnuts and they are delicious. And here's an old fashioned mercerie. All of those galons and lovely things to decorate with. 
Makes me want to do some crafts. Seems to be quite a lot of choice of sweet things here. This is really quite distracting. Look at those sugared fruits. So pretty, so glistening. No, I... And more of the sugared almonds. In fact, I think they sell them individually. They are calling to me. Well, I decided actually everyone at Lalande needed just one. As it's Philip's mother's birthday, we're also going to grab some nougat because she loves that. I thought you'd like to see this one. Look at those beautiful, beautiful flowers. I love all of the Christmas decorations and the windows. What do we have here? Christmas plates, lovely candlesticks, and surprise, surprise, a lot more chocolates. And of course, the marron glacé, those sweet chestnuts again. And isn't this one of the prettiest bakeries you have ever seen? Because yes, this shop is indeed a bakery. And that's before we even look up at the cakes. Mm. I found the best place in all of Versailles. The market hall. How delicious does that look? Suddenly I'm not interested in sweet treats anymore. This would be the perfect place to come and buy food for Christmas. But we're a little bit too far in advance. Here we've got turkey stuffed with truffle. And there, turkey stuffed with apples and raisins. This is a capon with porcini mushrooms, pork with jural mushrooms, duck stuffed with apricot. I wish it were closer to Christmas and we could take things back with us, but it's just not going to last long enough. The one important thing that people always eat in festivities in winter in France is oysters, especially for New Year. You found an antique shop. Oh, wow. Well, he's pretty glorious. There are lots of little antique shops here. So if you visit Versailles and fall in love with the look of the rooms there, you can always come and make your dreams come true with the antique shops. Sing choirs of angels Sing in exaltation Sing all ye citizens of heaven above Glory to God Glory spotted a shop selling Christmas decorations so obviously we rerouted immediately. I quite like these sparkly garlands and that would have been perfect last year for our tartan Christmas tree. Philip they're rich in squirrels. In oh yes there is indeed a hedgehog. There's another hedgehog. He's a bit like the one that you've got on the tree already. I love the moose but I think my absolute favourite has got to be the sheep. <laughs> Why am I not surprised that you found something? No one ever knows when inspiration strikes. Has it struck? It struck <laughs> like a lightning bolt. No. Yes. What have you found? Well, so this same one, actually my mum found it. And she's getting the same one for her Christmas table. And it's got all my favourite creatures on them. So all the good creatures, there's all Robin, which is my favourite bird. And uh, no, I think... Squirrel! I see an upside down squirrel right. here. So, is that a bear? It, so yes. one of your favourite woodland creatures at well, La Lande? Look, when they're that cute, then <laughs> sure. Yes, let's go with it. But this isn't for Christmas Day itself, is it? Because we're doing no. the chapel theme this exactly. year. Exactly. All right. However, it would be lovely as like the regular tablecloth in the dining room. Yeah, for the whole Christmas season. Chairs, and then there's some plates that I bought ages ago at MIU, so they haven't used very much. That okay. go very beautifully. And we're going to end the day with a pizza an extremely pretty looking restaurant. Oh, I'm happy. Even more so. Looking good. We've just got back to the hotel and tomorrow the elusive Nick is meeting us here on the way back to Lalande. Until then, à demain.